Hello there, I'm a lovely jewelry makers. I'm Christina at CSL Designs, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these cute musical notes that you can use as charms or anything else you'd like. And all we're going to need to make them is wire and some pliers. So if you want to learn how, then stay tuned. So the wire that I'm using here is this 0.8mm regular round copper wire. And I'm using this gauge here because it has strength in it, but it's still malleable enough to work with and create small details. And this is then the selection of pliers that I'll be using. So, of course, I have my basic ones that I almost always use, so my wire cutters, and then also my tweezer nose pliers here. And then I've got round nose pliers, and then lastly here, I've also got my six-step bell making pliers. Now, these aren't really essential, I just like to use them, but you could easily use the round nose pliers in place of them. And lastly, I do also have a metal file here, just to be able to file the ends of the wire and get it nice and smooth. So don't forget to check out the description box below the video. Like usual, I'm going to leave the material list and links that might be useful. Otherwise, let's get it all ready and let's get started. So then we'll need to cut some lengths of our wire. And what I have here is several lengths of about 15 centimeters each. So I like to cut just several lengths at a time so I can just grab another length of wire. So of course, how many you'll need will depend on how many notes you want to make. And also, the length of these wires is just really an estimate. So it's just a length that I like to work with because obviously the size of the notes will determine how much wire you're gonna use. And these lengths are nice and decent to work with, but also long enough if you want to make them larger as well. So just cut several lengths of wire. And of course you can always cut more if you need them. So first of all, I'm gonna start out showing you how to make the treble clef here, which is probably the most recognizable note of them all. So I'm going to start off grabbing one length of wire and then I'm going to be using my six step bell making pliers here to get it started as well. And I'm going to use the smallest step. So I want to start literally right at the very end of the wire. And we're starting out making the little spiral part of the treble clef. And I'm going to just grab it right as far as towards the end of the wire as you can, and then start bringing the wire around the pliers. So we're creating a little curve in it like this, and keep bringing it around towards where we're getting close to getting a full circle shape. Now what you can do is if you find this end is a little bit straight because you had to grab the wire a little bit in. What you can do is once you've made a bit of a curve here, just go in and cut off the very tip of the wire. Because then that will basically kind of remove that straight part and make it more of a circle. And then just go back in with your pliers, grab onto it and continue around. Now what we don't want to do is bring this side of the wire all the way to the end, so basically complete the circle. We want to leave it open, but once we get close to the end of the wire there, like I said, don't bring it all the way and create a complete circle. Leave that open gap and then start to, I'm just keeping my pliers in the space there for it to keep its shape, but also have something to hold on to, and then start bringing the long end here further around, but keeping it open. So we're kind of starting to create a spiral as opposed to a closed circle. And again, obviously something like this, it will then, how you make this will also determine how your final piece is going to look and something like the size of it. So if you make this larger, then obviously your final piece would end up getting larger. But then it's going to look a little something like this. So just kind of keep adjusting it. And what I've ended up with, or what we want to end up with, just bring that a little bit further there, is I just remove my pliers. We have the circle, well, the beginning of the spiral rather, in the middle there. And the very end of the wire is towards my left side and kind of slightly pointing a bit downwards. And then we created this spiral shape. So that's why we want to make sure to have the end of the wire finish. 
and then my long length is coming over the top and then going out towards the right. So this is basically the shape that we're wanting this spiral to be in for now. And then we need to move on for the next part of the treble clef there. So the spiral shape is in place. And then it's time to create the top part of the note. So making sure I'm holding that spiral shape there that we have in the correct direction. So again, I have that end of the wire towards the left and slightly downwards. Then this long end of the wire here that we're working with, I want to start for that to go upwards, but with a curve to it. So I'm just going to use my fingers here and put a curve into it as I'm bringing it upwards, kind of at the top of the spiral there. And then it's a matter of just getting the right curve that we're happy with. So if we obviously then kind of, as we're making this, imagine how the note is going to look. You can also say reference to an actual note. So if you have maybe some printed off or something, you can kind of compare. So I want to bring it a little bit further in. So I think something a bit like that. Then I'm going to grab my tweezer nose pliers here because we need to create the very top point. And again, how far up you go will obviously determine the height of the note. And what I'm going to do is then this long end is bend it against my pliers all the way back on itself. So you can see it's coming straight down the back there. And then with that, I want to then tighten this up because right now you can see obviously there's a gap between the two lengths. And I basically want to tighten that up. So I'm going to do that as if we were creating a prong and grab hold of the wires with my fingers and get it right at the back of the pliers and then tighten it up until tighten it a little bit more. We have more or less no gap. So you can see there now it's tightened and again it's coming straight down the back of it. Then I'm going to just kind of swap position however you need to as you're making it. I'm going to then just using my nails here, or well, one nail, grab onto the front wire and kind of keep hold of that. And then the length here, the long length that we're working with, just pull that away. So if we're looking at the note from the correct angle, it's going to go towards the left, obviously. I'm just changing position here, so pulling it in that direction. So basically pull it away from the other wire. And then having done that, we'll kind of create it as if we were making a prong. It just makes it more of a point and gives it a nice look. And just pull it out a little something like that. And then we need this length to come down behind, straight behind the spiral. So again, I'm going to kind of just hold on to everything up here and then bring it. So basically add a curve right after where we brought it out for it to come straight down behind. So something a little bit like that. And then what I like to do is 
this spiral that we made, the very inner part there, kind of open it as a jump ring. So push it backwards, as you can see there. And then I use that space now to bring this long wire through that gap, if I can just get it through there, to basically get to the very center of the spiral. And obviously right now it looks a little funky, so I'm gonna then basically close this back up because it's in that center of it now. So just kind of close it back up again as if you would a jump ring as well. And obviously you won't be able to go all the way back to where it was because this wire is running through the middle of it but just kind of flatten it out a little bit, making sure it keeps its shape. And this just gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. And then just push this wire into position. So it's coming straight down the middle there, intertwining with the spiral. And then we just have the very bottom left. Again, obviously this will then help determine how tall you could say your final note is going to be. So here I'm now using the second smallest step on my six step bell making pliers. You can also use round nose pliers and you could easily do that for the actual spiral as well. But I just like to use these pliers here so I know exactly the size I'm going to get. So I'm going to place this plier, making sure I use that second smallest step, a bit below the bottom of that spiral. And I'm making sure there's enough space to be able to bring this wire around, back around this plier. And there's still a bit of space between the two then. So bring this around and I'm holding it sideways like that. So obviously we do end up with kind of a flat note minus a little bit of a 3D effect there and then bring it around, more or less then create a full circle if we're looking from the correct angle and obviously you can kind of here just judge if you want it to be a little bit closer to the bottom part of the spiral, just roll it inwards a bit and tighten up that gap and then I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers and I'm just going to get to the very tip here because I just want this to be very small and place them just a bit before where my wire overlaps basically. So something a bit like that and then bring the end of the wire further around. So basically around my round nose pliers now. Again all the way to create a circle, it's kind of now a little circle within the larger circle and then that's basically done. The actual shape, now of course we just need to get rid of the excess wire and what I like to do is use my flush cutters here and cut off the excess right where the wires start to cross over. So there we go. That, when I then take my tweezer nose or flat nose and flatten this down because obviously the wire was kind of sticking out a bit, it literally, the end of the wire, buds up against itself. So it will be like this, which obviously kind of gets rid of that end so we won't have to worry about it catching or scratching on anything. And the other end is right there in the middle, creating part of that spiral shape. So this is basically a finished treble clef. And then just for reference to show you the note that I just made here, I have this length of wire left. So obviously that all depends on the size that you made the note, but this is just what I've ended up with. So for instance, this length could be long enough to make some of the other notes where maybe they use less wire. So that's why I like to work with those lengths and they'll cover all the notes, but also if you want to make them larger. But sometimes what you have left from 
when you're done making one would be enough to make another one. Next we're going to be looking at making the quaver or the eighth note. So I'm grabbing a new length of wire here and then I'm going to take my tweezer nose pliers and I'm going to place them towards one end but about five centimeters or so in from the end. I'm just going to work on the top part of the note first. So this end of the wires are the shorter end, the longer end is pointing downwards. I'm going to bend back over the top of the pliers and back on itself. So this time we're going over the top and then again you can see there we have the wire going down next to itself and also we have that gap so we now just need to close that first of all. So again put your fingers close to the very end there and then put the end at the back of your pliers and then start squeezing to close that up. As you can see there it's now nice and closed and then I'm gonna grab onto the bottom wire which is the longer one with my nail and then start to pull this top wire, the shorter one, out to the side so again pull it away from the other one but sideways so it comes out at a bit of an angle like that. Then we now first of all need to do that little tail, you could say on the note, and we need to add a nice curve. So I'm putting my fingers where I kind of want that curve to be and then bringing the short wire back downwards. And then kind of just work with this, and maneuver it until you're happy with how this will look. So obviously how far or how large you want this part of it to be, how far you want it coming out from the rest of it. You can also use tweezers and pliers here to help place your wire how you want it. So even though we want a curve here, we can still use our kind of tweezers and pliers to shape it in place. Just avoid squeezing too hard, but just kind of grab the wire where you want to help shape it. Just don't squeeze it hard because then obviously that will flatten it. We want to bring it a little bit further in, that curve. And then just straighten this back out. Kind of so it's coming straight down next to the long length there. Then I'm going to take my tweezer nose again and we're going to create the very bottom tip of this little tail. So place your pliers roughly where you want that to be. Then we need to take the short end there. Again, bend it against your pliers, but now it's underneath, back on itself. So it's coming straight up. And then, as you can see there, it was behind. So push that in place, and then again, you can see that opening of that gap. So I wanna tighten that up. Just hold it however you need to, to be able to do that. Get right to the back of the pliers. Now what you'll see is that might happen, it kind of twists in the pliers. So just basically put it back in position. And then squeeze it some more, tighten it until it is more or less fully closed up that gap. And then, if we're just looking at it from the front here, just bring that back down. This short length of wire is now going straight upwards. And what we want is for it to kind of come back towards the other, the long length. So again here, I'm gonna take my nail and now I'm at the front of the piece and grab onto the wire that's on top there to hold onto that while I'm then pushing this short length towards the other one and it's just going behind it and then literally just a little push like that you can see we kind of naturally create that little tail so if you need to adjust anything till you're happy with it 
obviously. It's up to you how kind of thick you want this, is how big you want that opening between the two wires. And before I cut anything off, because I kind of like to cut that wire off before we move to the bottom part, I like to just take this, the very bottom tip, grab onto that, and just to add a little bit more of a curve into this tail, just bring it slightly towards this long length of wire. So if you can kind of see I'm grabbing onto it with my pliers, and then just gently adding it closer, just the very tip, just to give it a little bit more of a curve to it. And then just Basically what we need to do now is finish off that short wire. So I'm going to take my flush cutters and again, same principle as before, we want to cut off the wire so when we have the end left, it's going to end up butting up against the side of itself, so like that, which means I need to cut right where the wires start overlapping. So I think something a bit like that. So that when we flatten this end now against the long length, which is on the same level naturally, that end is literally gonna kind of be tucked away by literally budding up against the side of itself. And that's how we finish off that end there. Now, obviously, we need to make the bottom part. So, I like to go down just a little bit below where that bottom tip of the tail ends. I'm just kind of holding it sideways. So, something a bit like this from the front. So, you can see just slightly below the bottom part of the tail. Now, I'm going to take the long length here and kind of start to bend it against the pliers towards the left side so this bottom little curve that we're going to do is going to be on the left whereas the tail is on the right and we're kind of going to get a little bit of an angle now I don't want to bring it all the way and create a 90 degree angle just something roughly a little something like this and then I'm going to go further out the wire and start bringing this around because that creates more of a nicely shaped curve and bring it around basically back towards the rest of it to create this shape and I'm just going to swap position here so it's a bit more comfortable to hold and basically just keep making this smaller creating a nice little not circle it's going to be a little bit more of an oval shape but obviously we also have the back here where we're holding our pliers so just keep bringing this around and making it smaller and smaller until it fits the size it's going to look nice with the note so obviously that will kind of depend on how you made the tail as well So if you need to adjust anything, again, you can use also the chain nose or the tweezer nose here to help with the curved part of this if you need to. Just make sure you don't squeeze it tight. You're just basically gently grabbing the wire to help maneuver any wire in place where you want it to go if it's not quite doing it itself. So just continue until let's have a little look at it here so I need to just kind of bring this down a bit more you can also maneuver it without your pliers of course just making sure that I'm not moving anything that I don't want to move but I'm just basically adjusting the size of this little almost weirdly shaped ball you could say but Let's have a little look, see if we're roughly there. 
I think we more or less are. And then all that's left to do is cut off the excess wire. So again, I'm grabbing my flush cutters here, and then I want to cut it off, same principle as the other times, where the wire starts to overlap, so we end up with the end of the wire butting up against itself, the side of itself. So just get the flush cutters in the right position, basically just where the wire starts to overlap. And then cut the excess off. And again here, this is a pretty decent length that we've got left that maybe can make one of the other notes, or this one again for that matter, probably. And then, as you can see, it's kind of just off from itself a little bit. Now flatten that out by bringing the end to sit in, kind of just like we're doing, a, would open or close a jump ring. And this note is now complete. Then we're gonna be making the quavers or the eighth notes. So then grabbing a length of wire here and my tweezer nose pliers, I then wanna place my pliers here, again towards one end of my wire, about the same length in as before, in the previous one. But this time, my short length is pointing downwards and the long length is pointing upwards there. And then, I'm gonna just put a bend into this and we just want a 90 degree bend. So, I'm gonna push this long end against my pliers and I'm just pushing it towards the right. And then what I like to do is, to get this bend as sharp as possible, just change position whenever you need to. I like to kind of over bend it a bit beyond that 90 degree angle or less than if you want to say and then basically bring it back up to the 90 degree angle. It just kind of creates a bit of a sharper bend to it. And then once we have that 90 degree angle in place I'm going to move, I'm going to leave that short length for now because we're going to use that to make our little curved bottoms, almost a little circle shape but more oval shaped ones. And I'm going to then grab my round nose pliers because for this one here there's not a natural kind of way to attach it so we just need to add a little loop. Now obviously if you're using it for something else you can just not do this loop. But basically I want to add a loop to the very top part of the note. And of course it doesn't need to be too large, but just basically large enough for whatever you need to use it for. So place my round nose pliers, what's going to end up being about the middle of the note. So somewhere a bit like this, and then I'm going to take the length of wire, the long length there, and bring it around my round nose pliers all the way just swap position whenever you need to and then back over itself like this so we create a full circle and basically have it come back out in the exact same direction as it already was before so basically we still have that straight line, we just added in that loop, that little circle which we can then use when we're done to obviously attach it to whatever we want to use it for. And then back to my tweezer nose pliers here, I'm going to place them where I want my next angle to be, or corner you could almost call it, so basically the same as the very first one that we did. And again, you can obviously measure more precisely if you want to, or just judge it by eye, but making sure that that loop that we just made is going to end up as much in the middle as possible. Then again, I'm going to push the long end of the wire against my pliers downwards, and we want that 90 degree angle, and what I'm just going to do again, just like before, is kind of overbend it a bit, and then bring it back, making sure my wire still stays straight. Or if it doesn't, just make sure to straighten it out if you need to. 
So we see it might kind of change the shape a little bit as we're working with it, especially with the heat of our fingers and that. But roughly something a little like that, I think looks about right. Now, in this case here, I'm just going to actually use the benefit of these specific pliers that I'm using because for my liking how I want this to look, they fit perfectly for this next part here, so the width of them. But obviously, you might be using some different pliers, so kind of just, if you then need to judge it, using some chain nose pliers or something, we need to bring this long length of wire back over to the other side again, because we need this kind of little wider part at the top. Now, I feel like these pliers fit perfectly for that, so I'm just going to use them. Again, bend my wire against the pliers there and over bend it to get that sharper angle. And then have it come straight below the other length where we have the loop in and basically have them run parallel to each other. And this is crossing over the top of that short length that we have. So if you're happy with how that looks and it's all fairly symmetrical, then I'm going to place my pliers in this corner down here where the wire is overlapping. So basically up against this short length of wire underneath, that's where the corner or the angle is naturally going to be. And again, bring this long length of wire against my pliers, overbend it, create this corner until it comes straight up and basically you can then see this wire is now starting to overlap itself and what we're going to do now is follow kind of the path we've already made for the wire so we need this to come back around to basically be able to do the other side down here so I'm putting my pliers into this side. Again, this should already have the perfect fit for the pliers. And then we just need to go over the cross of the top. So the length that we added in the loop, but we don't have to make the loop again. So just getting that corner in place. So it literally is just coming straight across the other wire and that kind of covers up the obvious overlap of the loop as well. So now it just kind of looks like there's a loop added, but the wire is covering the overlapping point. Now to the other side here, the final corner where we need to bring the wire back down straight downwards because we need this length to basically be parallel to the short length that we left in the beginning because that's what we're then going to move to to just finish this off just get the way in place until you're happy with how it looks that all the angles are correct and that the wire is basically overlapping on top of itself here so it kind of still looks like one piece obviously it is obviously one piece but so from the front you back kind of can't really obviously tell that it's overlapping but when you then look from the side you can see you have multiple wires on top of each other so just making sure this wire comes straight down something a bit like that i think so now it's time to do the bottom part so still just using my tweezer nose pliers and then I want to place them. I like to kind of start with the right side here. So that's in my case the long end that we still have left. Just because I think that's easier doing this side and then doing the other side afterwards. So basically place the pliers where we're going to start making that bottom curved part. So obviously that's kind of up to you again. You can measure to be more precise or you can just judge it by eye. So something like this and then 
bring this wire, I'm just bringing it over the top of the other one, just for now, towards the left, not fully a 90 degree angle, but just get a slight angle in there, and then go further out the wire and start to bring it around, because if you go further out the wire and move it, it will kind of more naturally put a curved shape into it. Keep bringing it around and again I'm just going to swap the positioning of my pliers so I can make this smaller and smaller until basically it has the size that's going to fit nicely with the rest proportion wise. Just kind of bring that down a bit and let's just have a look at it. I think I just want to bring the angle down a little bit more, kind of tightened up a bit too much. And then we don't have to completely decide if this is done yet. What I actually like to do before I cut anything off, I want to do both of them. So basically, we need to place the pliers on the other wire there in ideally the same place. Again, you can measure to be more precise or you can just judge it by eye. So somewhere around there, I think. And then I take, again, same principle, the wire here, bring it towards the left to get in that angle and then start to bring the rest of it around to basic create this shape on the bottom to mimic the other side and then really it's a matter of kind of just getting them to look as similar to each other as possible so as you get it as symmetrical as possible here so this is why we left this length in the beginning so we have this to basically create this part and it's a matter of getting this smaller and obviously in the right position. So just adjust the shape. You can see this is a little bit wonky in the shape compared to the other one. And again, if you need to, it can be easier sometimes, especially because it's a bit small what we are working with, to actually use the pliers to Maneuver the wire again, making sure I'm not squeezing tight because that would straighten the wire. But I'm just using it to help maneuver it exactly where I want it to go, basically. Let's just have a little look and compare the two sides. Now I can tell that this one here, it's a bit, bit smaller, a bit different shape, but also it's a little bit too far down. So it's a matter of adjusting this until, like I said, they're as similar as possible. So have a little look. That's helped quite a bit. Now just tighten up the other one a little bit here. And then let's compare them. I think we're pretty much getting there. So I grab my flush cutters here to get rid of the excess of the wire lengths. And again, same principle, we're going to end up with both of these ends so the end is butting up against the side of itself and I'm using the back of my flush cutters just like all the other times to be against the end that I am going to have left. So place them right where the overlap begins, cut off the excess, that's one, and the same with the other one, right where 
the overlap begins like that, cut off the excess and then just taking the tweezer nose again to make sure we're flattening this because if we look from the side you can see the ends are kind of just slightly sticking out so to be able to get them to completely butt up against the side of itself we just need to flatten that down again close it as if it's a jump ring and you can always put your fingers over it to make sure you can't feel any part of the end of the wire there and if you can then obviously you just need to close it up a little bit more so this is how we finished that off and we now have a complete note for this one and the final note that we're going to go through is the base note so this note is what uses the least wire so in my case here I'm just grabbing one of the lengths I had left from the other notes that I made but of course it will also depend how large you want this to be but I'm then going to use my round nose pliers here and I'm going to start working right towards the end of the wire so the very end I'm going to just place my pliers as close to the end as possible now obviously there will be a point where it, the wire, the pliers, sorry, will kind of slip off the wire. So just get as close to the end as possible. And then also very close to the tip of the pliers. And then I'm going to start bringing my wire around the pliers there to create just a tiny little loop. Now, like I said, if you find that it's not going to be a complete circle because the very tip kind of stays straight, go in and take your flush cutters and just cut off that very tip that stays straight. And then place your pliers, the round those pliers back on and then continue bringing the wire around. That way we get more of a circle rather than having that straight bit right at the very end of the wire. So as we're basically getting to the point where the end of the wire is budding up against the side of itself because we created the full circle, I'm going to, in this case here, just keep my pliers in that little loop that we made just to kind of hold on to it and then I'm going to keep bringing this length of wire around but we're basically going to be creating a bit of a spiral I'm going to go further out the wire and bring it around because we want it to be an open spiral so we don't want this now to be right close to that very inner loop that we did we want to create a spiral that's more open coming around And obviously, again, this is up to you how you want it to look and how large you want it to be. Is how much of an open spiral you're going to make it. So, looking at it from how it's going to sit, basically, just grab that again. The direction of it is going to be the very end of the wire there is going to more or less be pointing downwards. So that's the direction to keep in mind. So I think this is more or less the size that I want it. And I'm happy with how kind of the open spiral part is coming around. Now also because this one doesn't have an obvious way to attach it to something. So we do need to add a loop in obviously assuming you want to use it for that. For that I'm going to go and basically place some pliers at the top. So this is the right angle we're looking at. Of course I'm just going to move it however I, need, however I need to to make it more comfortable to work with. I'm going to place now my round nose pliers what would be the top of the piece. And how large you need to make this loop, obviously, will depend on what you plan to attach it to so you'll be able to get what you need through it. 
Then I'm going to add my loop by bringing this long end of the wire around my pliers. Now it's away from the rest here. Just bring it all the way around and reposition your pliers whenever you need to. And basically create a full circle and have the wire come out exactly how it was before. So we have something a little bit like that. Now if you need to do any adjustments, do it now while we're here. Just want to push this loop a little bit tighter. Then otherwise, again I'm just placing my pliers back in that loop to kind of have something to hold on to. Then we want to continue the spiral shape around this side, so again holding it in the right direction. This loop we just made is going to be at the top, which obviously is where it's going to be attached to whatever we want to add it to. Then I just want to adjust my wire here, the actual curve of it, so it looks nice compared to the rest proportion wise and also the shape of the spiral itself. We want this to come further down and again determine as well how open you want it. Or how tight you want it. Now what we need to do is add some tiny little loops on the side as well. So again this is the angle when it's complete. So it's on the right side here. So again I'm using the very tip of my round nose pliers because these basically I want them as small as possible. And I'm going to place them kind of on the side of this inner loop that we made, the very initial loop, and we're going to need to have space for two. So I'm going to start placing my pliers somewhere like here, as close to the tip of my pliers as possible, and then same principles when we made the top loop. I'm going to take my wire, bring it around my pliers here, all the way, and again reposition my pliers, and I'm overlapping the wire the same way as I did before. And you can see we have a tiny little loop. Now what I like to do as well, obviously it all depends on the size, is just get my chain nose or tweezer nose and actually tighten this up even more. So we can just kind of squeeze it a bit. like that and then just get this wire into position so we still have a nice shape in place so you can see we have that first tiny little loop now we need to make one more literally right next to it so I'm placing the pliers again very close to that first one and then same principle, bring the wire around the pliers here to create a full circle, a smaller one as possible in this case here. Have the wire come down again where it kind of came before and we've then just added in that loop and again making sure these two loops now that I'm making are going to be as similar to each other as possible. I just want to just slightly tighten this up as well, just like I did with the first one. So obviously make it all as symmetrical as possible. And then bring this length back downwards can see we added those two little loops and then basically 
it's now just adjusting the shape and making sure we're happy with how everything looks. So we need the bottom part here after these two little loops that we made to come downwards again, continuing that spiral and have it be nice and open. And basically we need to cut off the excess, but what the bottom part here, it needs to kind of come out a little bit more an angle and kind of straighten up a bit towards the end here. So when you're happy with that, then of course get rid of the excess by taking flush cutters and then basically cut it down to the point where it completes the shape. So something a bit like this, so close to the side, the left side of the inner part there of the spiral. Like that. And that is basically the complete note. Now obviously here, this is a little different from the others because we actually have an open end of wire. So what I like to do is take my metal file here because this can be a bit rough and pointy. So take your metal file and literally just hold everything in place so nothing is going to move out of shape. But just gently file the end a bit here just to kind of smooth it out so it's not going to be rough and sharp. So just want to do this and then obviously feel it with your finger to see how it then feels and then when you're happy with it this note will be done. And that is then how we make the bass note. So these are our four notes here. And then just to show you how to attach them, of course, on two of them we have our loops, but the other two haven't got any loops in. So I'm just gonna show you one at a time here. Now, of course, I'm grabbing my jump ring and then also some flat nose and my cheap tweezer nose pliers here. And I'm just opening my jump ring. And then first of all, we have the bass note that has the loop, of course, we can then just add that jump ring into the loop. So that's obvious enough. And then we have the kind of double note there with the loop as well, also obvious enough. And then we have a single note. And here I'll just add the jump ring through the kind of tail part because obviously it almost is creating a loop by itself there's obviously a different shape so just add it through there so it naturally hangs at the very top and finally the treble clef same principle really I'm just going to add the jump ring through that top shape the opening and then that will naturally hang at the very top point as well with the jump ring and of course you can then attach them to whatever you want to chain or anything else or they'll be really cute as earrings as well. So that's how you make these cute musical notes out of wire that you can then use as charms or anything else you'd like. Now do keep an eye out because I will be using these notes for other designs in the future and making tutorials for that so if you're not subscribed already make sure to do that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.